that there was somebody that absolutely is not honoring and obeying their fathers and their mothers. Now, they got reasons why they're not doing it. I gave to them what thus saith the Lord. And why he does not say honor a good father or mother. He just said honor your father and your mother. And we tried to make it plain to understand why that is so. That is, the, that is the direct correlation of the relationship that God desires between you and I. He is our father. We are his children. And the Bible says that we must obey. Our obedience is better than our sacrifice. And in that process, as a father, he is not just going to be just giving us all good, good fortunes and everything of that. We're going to suffer some misfortunes. We're going to have some things that we ain't going to like that's going to happen to us. And, and sometimes that's going to happen because God is chastening us. He's trying to correct us in love just as a father and mother will discipline you when you've done wrong. So therefore, he says, you still have to honor and obey me because I am your father. Lord have mercy. Verse 19, uh, Matthew, the 19th chapter, the 16th verse says this. And behold, there came a man up to him saying, Teacher, what excellent and perfectly, essentially good deed must I do to possess eternal life? Now let me explain what happened here. Uh, Jesus was, um, was out ministering. Uh, um, he, went to, he was left Galilee and went to Judea. And a great company of people, a company of, of people were following him. Throngs of people were following him. I call it they were following the Jesus show. Because everybody that followed him were not following him for the right reasons. Most were following him because they wanted to see signs and wonders that Jesus was performing that, that, that nobody else had ever done before. So they were caught up. Like some of us are at our churches. We don't come to church to hear the word of God. We come to hear it. We come to see a show. We come to see the, the praise dances. We come to see the choir sing. Lord have mercy. My favorite singer singing her song. We come to see hear our favorite preacher preach, but not just preach. We come to hear him hoop and, and do some hooping and do some other linguistic uh, gymnastics and, 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 and hoops and, and flips and things because that excites us. We don't care nothing about hearing the word of God because the word of God convicts us and we ain't trying to be convicted. Matter of fact, we want to hear a message that that, that is soothing to our ears. Tell me about how I can be rich. Yeah, let me hear that. And not only that, tell me how I can continue to be saved but still do sin. Yeah, that's grace doctrine that people are putting out there. Yeah, you better get me. Oh, my God. Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. I'm going to tell you about me and my relationship with God. When he brings something out, uh, uh, there's a reason why he brings it out. And I, and I don't just poo-poo and just run past it and just let it go. Romans, the sixth chapter, for those folks that are believing that you can live your life any old kind of way, but because of grace, that is all right for you to do so. We got a word from you from God, and it's found in Romans, the sixth chapter, the first verse. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Okay, you don't have to respond to that. Certainly not. How can we... Who died to sin, living it any longer? Are you ignorant of the fact, or you just don't know? Now, let me make make sure. I know you hear the tone of my voice, but ignorant does not mean stupid. It means you just don't know. Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried, therefore, with Him by the baptism and the death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, Father. So we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. That's right, because when, when it speaks of that newness of life, it's referring to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things old have passed away. That old nature of ours, that old moral sinful nature of ours, that's supposed to be passed away, dead. And then all things have become new. We're supposed to be walking around and living and, and behaving in newness of life. Habitually, two might habitually live. Why did it have to be a habit? Because we were absolutely, y'all, we were strung out on sin prior to salvation. That's right, strung out, addicted to sin. Absolutely addicted to sin. The Bible said in, in Genesis the sixth chapter, when God let me go to Genesis the sixth chapter, when God got really upset with mankind. Uh, back in the days of Noah, y'all. And I'm going to read verse, I believe, verse 5. Because that, that fits us today. Watch this. The Lord saw 
that the weakness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination and intention of all human thinking was only evil continually. That's what God saw in man. And how did he see that? He saw that in, verse, in, in Jeremiah 17, 9. When the heart of man is deceitful above all things. It is wicked. So, let's go to Jeremiah 17, 9 again. Lord have mercy. God is trying to get us to understand some things here, y'all. Even in this message that he's given us about knowing the fact that uh, 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 what are you willing to sacrifice to follow Jesus? But in order for you to be willing to sacrifice something, you got to know what you need to give up. And, and, and everything that you've given up is not something that you need to hold on to. Amen. Everything that you're giving up is not something that you need to hold on to. Absolutely. We don't need to hold on to that mind of ours. That's why the King David, I read that in your hearing in Psalm 51, verse 10, created me a clean heart and renew a right standing spirit within me. He can't, he didn't try to hold on to his heart. Why didn't he try to hold on to his heart? Because why? I'm going to tell you why he didn't try to hold on to his heart. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. And it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mortally sick. Okay, stage four. If that's what you want to, if you want to have that, want to help your understanding. Stage four. Like cancer. Who can know it, perceive, understand, be acquainted with his own heart and mind? That's how bad we were. And that's why God said in, in Genesis, the sixth chapter, that every imagination and intention of all human thinking was only evil continually. So therefore, yeah, we have to go through that process, y'all. We have to go through this process. Uh, uh, we have to die to our own selves. We have to be willing to give up our own self. Now I'm going, I'm going back to Romans, the sixth chapter. We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. We needed to have a newness of life because as I just explained, that heart of ours, it was deceitful and wicked. The very thoughts and imagination of man went outside of Christ. It is perverse. It is wicked. It's evil, y'all. The thoughts of ours are evil. The Bible says this. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding way of thinking. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. And there's a reason why God says that. Because he'll take you to Proverbs 14, 12, 16, 25, and he says, There is a way that seems right to a man. Our way of thinking. The end thereof is death. And some translations say, or destruction. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Romans the sixth chapter. For if we have become one with him by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. When he found you and found me in sin, he does not expect us to continue operating in that sin because that's where the state that he found us in. He expects us to be changed, transformed. That's why, again, uh, 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 God has expectation for salvation. That is that we must change. And what are you willing? Are you willing? What are you? Are you willing to make the sacrifice to follow Jesus? Are you willing to make the sacrifice? Are you willing to die to your own self? Are you willing to do that? Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna take us back to some scripture that the Lord has had me use in the last three days, three weeks, y'all. And it coincides, it, it, it just falls into place. I don't plan this. It's just the way it falls into place, y'all. And God is obviously trying to get a message across to us because, again, he's trying to change our way of thinking. Understand this. I know this to be true because I've operated in, 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 in uh, environments where we try to institute change. I worked for the Social Security Administration uh, for 29 years. Uh, the last 10 years I was in management. Amen. No, it's nine years I was in management. Yeah, nine years I was in management. And when I was in management in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, they brought me there as their first deputy customer service branch manager for a call center. They were beginning in from the ground floor up. But they were using, um, utilizing employees of the administration that worked in an organization known as the Wilkes-Barre Data Operations Center. This was a place, y'all, where people that did work there, and it was 1,150 employees, 
they the type of work they did was simply this file clerk and data entry. They were the lowest paid people working for the Social Security Administration of 65,000 employees. These were the lowest paid people. Amen. They didn't, they, they didn't progress above a GS level three or four. That was lowest. That was the lowest paid people. They were generally a GS two and GS three clerks. Amen. Their supervisors and managers were GS sevens. Well, we came there with this here program to make them uh, 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 what we call teleservice center uh, uh, representatives or call center agents, and their pay scale levels was going like this: five, six, seven, eight at the journeyman level. Uh, the, 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 the lead, matter of fact, five, six, seven, well, we eventually, it became an eight. I'm going to tell you about it. It was actually five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. And then their, uh, the, the lead position was an eight. The supervisors were tens. Well, when I came there, I reported there on August the 1st, on August the 20th, we had what was known as a, 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 a town hall meeting. And the town hall meeting was with our bosses that were in Baltimore, Maryland, that oversaw that operation um, there uh, um, at, at headquarters. Oh, man, the Office of Earnings Operation, whose assistant associate commissioner was named Faye Perkins Barnes, and ultimate boss was the associate commissioner of the Office of Central Operations, uh, Bur W. Burnell Hurt. Well, when they came and showed up, they met with those of us that were in the management in that facility. They, we had a hearing. We had a director there uh, who was uh, uh, oversaw everything. Um, her name was uh, Carol Truskowski. We call her Carol T. And um, we met there in her office in her conference room. And um, the Office of Earnings Operations Assistant Social Commissioner Faye Perkins Barnes, she just spoke to me. And all the only thing that she said, she didn't say welcome or nothing like that. She says, Arthur. This is a high-profile position. I knew exactly what she meant, y'all. Well, in that town hall, they took us into the uh, auditorium, and 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 Burnell was introducing uh, us and going over and reiterating with the people what they were going to do. They were going to transition this place from a data operations center into a mega center, uh, a social security mega site that did everything under the sun as far as a production would go. They would do. They would. People have uh, would be doing incoming calls. They were going to be doing taking claims, uh, uh, doing claims, uh, doing internet work. We were going to be a, a mega center site uh, uh, that Social Security had never had, and it was going to be the largest. Well, when we came, he came there and he told them. He introduced everybody. Then he introduced me. I thanked them for the opportunity, thanked everyone, and assured everybody this was a great opportunity for them. But I also recognized that something was wrong with our grades. Our grades didn't match up with the other organizations in Social Security. The other 36 call centers that they had, it didn't match up with theirs, and it didn't even match up with the sister operation that was started six months earlier in Baltimore. So I made note. I said, well, you know, the journeyman grade uh, level at, is at seven. That, that really should be an eight. And, the, and the, um, the lead should be nines, and the supervisor should be 11s, and the manager should be 12s and 13s. Uh, Burnell dropped his head, and he did one of these numbers. Everybody else thought, uh-oh, Arthur done messed up and said something he shouldn't have been saying. Well, let me tell you, a month later, on September the 19th, when we were in Salinas, California, we had went out the week before to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we ended up in Salinas because those were two facilities that had transitioned as we had trans were, were, were planning on transition. They were also data operation centers. We were the last of the dinosaurs. And so a call came to us out there in California and said that the Commissioner of Social Security at that time, his name was Ken Apfel, A-P-K-F-E-L, -A uh, I believe, is his, was the spelling of his name, or A-P-F-K-E-L, something like that. He came out there to visit the facility, and he made an announcement. And when I heard the announcement, I said, that's not how Social Security does things. He made an announcement that everybody in our organization was going to go through an upgrade of reclassification. We got upgraded to those pay scale levels that I said we should have had. Uh-huh. That's only because I was at that. I was, I was operating under the, under God. When I came there, y'all, I told people that Social Security may have paid for me to come, but I'm here because of spiritual reason. I was being elevated spiritually, and God was blessing me. And, yeah, I preached my initial sermon a year later. But, yeah. But yeah, here's the point. These people didn't know. They didn't know how to do this kind of work. They were intimidated, scared to death. 
We had 75 uh, 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 students in a class in, in three separate